the dollar store title was on the line with Roderick Strong against our little puppy Pockets. And Roddy had Taven and Bennett in his corner. And, and, and now Roddy's wearing a horror mask to the ring. Is he trying to usurp the devil's throne from Adam Cole while Adam's crippled? That's a horrible thing to do. And everybody, I'm, I think Roderick Strong's work is impeccable. And I think a lot of him. And I understand his, his, his drawbacks, his weaknesses are his size and his promos. And I've been saying that for 15 years, but his physical conditioning and his work, and you can get a great match out of almost anybody with Roddy. We found out here different because it's just, it's an insult. And you can use him properly in an athletic sports oriented fucking environment to where he's credible. But screaming and yeah, hey, Adam and all this fucking phony bullshit. They've already poisoned people on him here. And it's not going to work. Since he's been here, he's been presented as a complete dingleberry. And meanwhile, he's working against Pockets, who is a complete dingleberry and has been, been presented as the most unbeatable fucking guy in the company. He has won over every top wrestler on the roster. He, Pockets. They put him over Samoa Joe. And Joe's now the world fucking champion. So now you've got a match where the, the Dingleberry, who's a great talent, but is presented as an idiot who can't win, beats the Dingleberry, who really is a Dingleberry, who never loses. This is where they decide to beat this guy and take this fucking cheap-ass fucking phony belt off of him. I, I, so, I mean, normally I'd be saying ding-dong, the witch is dead. At least they beat the fucking goof. The next step, hopefully, is the unemployment line. I know it's not. I'm wishful thinking. But goddamn, not only is it more insulting to the business when somebody makes this idiot look like something approaching a real wrestler and he he can do the moves so can a trained chimpanzee but and that would be a tribute to roddy that he got anything out of him but now you've spent all this time building this goof up to be unbeatable and then you beat him with a guy that you've brought in and already fucking poisoned and ruined and the fucking lowest guy on a totem pole and he wins the thing Help me understand what the fuck this decision was about. What the decision to put him over Orange Cassidy was about or the entire the, booking of Orange Cassidy? What are you asking? Is the whole thing for this? I, not even a, a, a brand new... Well, they brought old fucking Light Switch White in and wanted to push him as a big top heel. He didn't fucking beat this fucking clown. I don't remember... Did Samoa Joe, on his way to the title, choke this fucking guy out and leave him in a garbage can? I don't remember it. Well, he lost the TV title uh, or uh, the, his United uh, Nations, whatever the fuck he has. He lost it briefly, and then he came back. Because remember when he lost it, they were building up, he's so tired, he's been defending it every week, he's broken down. And then when he came back, it's like the same thing. <laughs> Going right back to that. Um... Mm. I can't explain it. Tony Khan likes Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy has his fans. You could argue that he's one of those guys that makes the fans there happy, but doesn't help the company grow. They probably think he's one of the most marketable people they have, and they, they love him. And they think he's a great wrestling mind. And... Well, and by the, by the way, this great wrestling mind there, Pockets, the heel beat him clean with a backbreaker. Taven and Bennett didn't interfere. The heel beat the baby face clean after all this with a fucking backbreaker. Well, that would, that's the way Orange Cassidy would want it. Fair and How square. How do you get heat off of that? No heat. Fair and square. Clean cut. And then I'll just say one more thing, so that because they had a surprise. Taven and Bennett and Roddy are celebrating in the ring, and suddenly Kyle O'Reilly gets in the ring looking like he's been homeless for the past year and a half. Not injured, but homeless. 
Why does everyone reappear on TV looking like that? Adam Cole, the same thing. I mean, dirty sweatpants that look like he dug them out of a dumpster and a fucking sweatshirt and his hair all disheveled and bags under his eyes and his... And he was making a mean face at Roddy behind his back, but then turned around and hugged him. And then everybody's happy to see him, and Bennett takes off his undisputed flatulent shirt or whatever their fucking group name is and gives it to And now Bennett looks like he's a bald 50-year-old truck driver. Why are these guys... He used to be a good-looking man 10, 12 years ago. He looked like... I thought he was like fucking... 27, 28, now he looks 55 and he's got not a hair on his head. I don't think he's 28 years old. He, he used to be. Well, he used to be, yes. Well, I'm talking, I said 10 or 12 years ago, he's a good looking man, full head of hair, like 20 something years old. Now he's goddamn it, AARP fucking card. And he gives the shirt to Kyle O'Reilly and Kyle turns around and gives it to fucking Roddy, whispers in Roddy's ear and walks off. But this is the best way they can think of to bring Kyle O'Reilly back. He jumps in the ring dressed like a goddamn hobo fresh off a freight train, turns down a free T-shirt that's cleaner than what he's wearing, whispers to somebody, and walks off. It's not a clean T-shirt if someone else was wearing it. It's cleaner than what he was wearing. Well, the return of Kyle O'Reilly, I presume he's cleared medically. And he didn't look like he'd been cleared mentally. It looked like they just talked him down off a bridge. What the, why does everybody come out looking like shit? How come security lets them all just jump in the ring? Well, cause they said, look at that guy. He looks like shit. We ain't going to fuck with him. Stay away from that guy. Yeah. 